July 20. The Holy Prophet Elias Saint Elias the God-seer, miracle worker, and zealot for faith in God, was born of the tribe of Aaron in the town Tishba for which he was called the Tishbit. When Elias was born, his father Sabas saw angel of God hovering around the child, wrapping the child in fire and feeding him flames. That was a foreshadowing of Elijah's fiery character and his God-giver fiery power. He spent his entire youth in divine contemplation and prayer, withdrawing frequently into the wilderness to contemplate and pray in tranquility. At that time, the Jewish kingdom was divided into two unequal parts. The kingdom of Judah, consisting of only two tribes, the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, with their capital in Jerusalem, and the kingdom of Israel, consisting of the remaining ten tribes, with their capital in Samaria. The former was governed by the descendants of Solomon, and the latter was governed by the descendants of Jeroboam, a servant of Solomon. The greatest confrontation that the prophet Elijah had was with the Israelite king Ahab and his evil wife Jezebel, for they worshipped idols and were turning the people away from serving the one living God. In addition, Jezebel, a Syrian, persuaded her husband to erect a temple to the Syrian god Baal and appointed many priests to service of this false god. Through great miracles, Elijah displayed the power and authority of God. He closed up the heavens so that there was no rain for three years and six months. He called fire down from heaven to consume the sacrifice to God, which the pagan priests were unable to do for the false god, Baal. He brought rain by his prayer. He miraculously multiplied flour and oil in the home of the widow in Zarefta and resurrected her son. He prophesied to Ahab that the dogs will lick up his blood and to Jezebel that the dogs will consume her flesh, all of which came to pass, and he performed many other miracles and prophesied other events as well. He spoke with God and heard the voice of God in the calm after the wind, earthquake and fire on Mount Horeb. Before his death he designated Elijah as his successor in the prophetic calling and with his mantle he divided the waters of the Jordan. Finally, he was taken up to the heavens in a fiery chariot drawn by fiery horses. On Mount Tabor he appeared together with Moses beside our Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of the world, Saint Elias would appear again to put an end to the power of Antichrist. Revelation chapter 11 in the Greek Synaxarion, the following miracle by the holy prophet Elijah is recorded. A certain Paisius abbot of the monastery of the holy prophet Elias in Jerusalem came to Constantinople and from Constantinople went to Belgrade at the time that patriarch Paisius was there. At that time, there lived in Belgrade an Orthodox Christian who had a Roman Catholic wife. On St. Elias' day, his wife was going to knead bread. But her husband said to her, Today is the feast of the prophet Elijah, and you should work. His wife replied that this feast had passed ten days earlier, according to the papal calendar, and so a quarrel arose between them. The stubborn woman kneaded the dough, but to the wonder the dough turned to stone in her hands. All the neighbors gathered to see the miracle and each one took a piece of the stone. Paisius also happened to be there, and he likewise took a piece of the stone as evidence of the miracle of God and took it with him to Jerusalem. Paisius placed the stone before an icon of the holy prophet Elias in his monastery. Saint Elias, Patriarch of Jerusalem, and Saint Flavius, Patriarch of Antioch. Saint Elias and Saint Flavius were great zealots for the faith and defenders of orthodoxy. They were driven into exile by the heretical Emperor Anastasius, and then they both died. They precisely foresaw the death of Emperor Anastasius as well as their own death. 
They wrote to each other at the same time from places quite far apart. Anastasius the Emperor died today. Let us both go before the judgment of God with him. Two days later both saints died in the year 518 AD. Reflection Writing about the life of his sister Saint Macrina, Saint Gregory of Nyssa hesitated to enumerate her miracles, saying, that I may not be responsible for the sin of unbelieving among weak men. His term for those who do not believe is weak. Truly there is nothing weaker than a man without faith. The man without faith believes in the power of dead things and dead elements of nature, but does not believe in the power of God or of men of God. This is spiritual dullness, and this dullness is equivalent to spiritual death. Thus, living souls believe and dead souls do not believe. Living souls believe in the powerful miracles of the prophet Elias. These miracles give them courage and joy, for they know that they are manifestation of the might of God. When God manifests his might through lifeless things and elements of nature, why would he not manifest it through living and holy men? The prophet Elias' appearance on Mount Tabor at the time of transfiguration of the Lord in particular gives the faithful the greatest joy. During his life on earth, this great prophet gave proof of the existence of the one living God and by his appearance on Mount Tabor hundreds of years after his departure from the earth, he gave mankind visible proof of life after death. Contemplation to contemplate God's miraculous aid to the Israelites in battle. Deuteronomy 2.3 How Moses defeated the pagan kings Sihon and of the Amorites and all king of Basan, for it was God's will that they perish. How Moses was unable to take the land of Moab, for God did not want this, for the sake of the descendants of the righteous lot. How victory and defeat in wars do not occur without God's permission. Homily About the Apostle's personal testimony This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. 2 Peter 1.17.18 Let us hear the testimony of the true and faithful one who was crucified on a cross because of his testimony. Let us hear the Apostle Peter, who proved what he was unable to prove by his words, by his bloody death on the cross, being crucified upside down by the pagans. He testifies that he was on the holy mountain, Mount Tabor, when our Lord was transfigured, and Moses with Elias appeared. He testifies that a voice was heard from heaven, saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. 2 Peter 1.17 In this text, the Apostle does not speak of what he and his companions saw on the holy mountain, which is narrated in the Gospel, but repeats only that which they heard. That which they heard is just as important as that which they saw. Therefore, let mankind hear that the apostles saw the Lord Jesus transfigured in a wondrous heavenly light, and let them know that he is the Son of God. Let mankind also hear that the apostles saw Moses and Elias alive, and let them know that life after death is real, as is the judgment of God. Let them also hear the Lord Jesus called the Son of God by God the Father himself, and not by mere men. Those who speak these words to mankind and relate to them what their eyes saw and what their ears heard are faithful and true witnesses. He who does not believe the apostles believes Judas, Caiaphas, Herod, and Nero, the persecutors of the apostles and traitors to the truth. He who does not believe in the righteous one has no alternative but to believe in the unrighteous one. He who does not believe in the pure ones must believe in the impure ones. He who does not believe in those who suffer for the truth must believe in the torturers and libertines. They does not down for any other reason than that mankind 
may take sides with one or another. O Lord, our Savior and Enlightener, enlighten our souls by your holy words, for which your apostles suffered. To thee be glory and praise forever. Amen.